Today we're going to look at the guitar part in Lizzo's Juice. This is a great tune to learn how to play. It's pretty easy to put together and it's a lot of fun to play along with the recording. I've included a PDF with this video that is a complete chart of the tune. You should download that, um, check it out, and play along with the recording using that as it will give you a complete framework of the form of the tune. Which I want to talk about first. The form of the tune is actually pretty standard. It consists of an intro, a verse, a pre-chorus, and a chorus. These sections are repeated, and there's a break for a bridge in the middle of the tune. When you're playing through this tune, you want to make sure that you're using a nice, loose, and relaxed left hand. That's the best way to achieve fluid movement between the chords in this tune, as they're actually pretty disjunct movements on the guitar neck. For the verses of the tune, you're actually going to want to use a delay pedal. I'm not using one in this video, but you'll notice on the recording, you hear a lot of reverb, and there's also a little bit of a slapback on each one of those chords. It's actually just the use of a delay pedal. I'd highly recommend something like the Boss Digital Delay or something along those lines in order to achieve that effect, to really nail this tune. As far as picking and muting goes, you're not really going to be muting anything in the verses of the tune. The chords kind of ring, and the delay provides that added little boost to the end of the chord. Where we really need to be careful about our picking and muting comes when you go to the funk parts that are part of the chorus. That's really going to be relying on both left hand and right hand palm muting. You're going to achieve something like this, which is a combination of both my left hand muting the string and my right hand muting the string. For that left handed muting, I'm really using the same principles that I used in the police video that I did a couple weeks ago on Roxanne, where we're releasing the chord, but you're not removing your fingers from the strings. You're just reducing the pressure on the actual chord. As far as my right hand goes, I'm letting that flow pretty freely until I need to palm mute. And then I'm using this outer portion of my palm right here to gently press on the strings and give myself that muted sound. So the overall key is D minor. So our first chord is actually a D minor seven with a D being played by the bass. On top, we have the upper voices of a D minor seven chord, starting with an A here under my third finger, seventh fret, fourth string, my first finger is barring here at the fifth string, and I'm going to get a C here on the third string, first finger, fifth fret, F here with my second finger on the sixth fret of the second string, and then my barred first finger has an A on top. My next chord is an E flat major triad. I have my third finger on an E flat right here, 8th fret 3rd string, my pinky, 8th fret 2nd string, has a G, the 3rd of the triad, and on top, my 1st finger here, at the 6th fret, has a B flat. Our next chord voicing, we actually return to this D minor 7 voicing that we had earlier, where we're playing A, C, F, A. But now the bass player is playing an F over top of this chord, giving us the sound of an F major chord. From there, we're moving down to a B flat major seven voicing. The bass player is playing a B flat in the bass. And on top, I'm voicing here an A with my second finger on the third string of the second fret, a D with my third finger here, third fret, second string, and an F on top, my first finger, first fret, first string. And from there, we move up to a C7. These four chord voicings take care of the intro, the verse, and the pre-chorus of the tune. You're primarily interested in playing the top three strings of each voicing. That'll give you the most accurate sound. So for the verse, I'm gonna play something like this.
Like I was saying earlier in the video, if you use a delay pedal with the feedback set to the lowest possible level, you can create the same sound that's occurring in this track with a single repetition of this voicing through a delay pedal. When we move into the chorus of the tune where it starts to get a little bit funky, you're still playing the same chord voicings, but I'm inserting a C triad between both the D minor seven and the B flat major seven. You'll notice in the chart during the chorus section, there's an eighth note on the and of two followed by a dotted quarter note, giving us this type of rhythm. That's actually playing that C triad behind this D minor seven. That C triad is held underneath the bar on our first finger here, comprised of a G at the fifth fret, fourth string, a C, fifth fret, third string, and an E, fifth fret, second string. So behind my D minor seven voicing, I have this. So let's try that in action. After that, I'm moving back to that E flat major triad, in which my third finger is playing an E flat on the eighth fret third string. My pinky is playing a G, the third of the chord, on the eighth fret second string. First finger playing a B flat at the sixth fret first string. From there I move back to that D minor sound, which at this point, again, has an F in the bass, so this is actually an F major chord. And then I move down to my B flat major seven chord, B flat in the bass, with a D minor triad on top. And here's where I'm gonna insert that other C major triad by using my first finger on C on the first fret of the second string and playing the third and first string around it open. G, C, E. So you get this. In real time, it's gonna sound like this. From there, I'm returning to that C7 to end the phrase. So the funky portion that makes up the chorus of the tune should go something like this. And finally, when you get into the outro chorus of the tune, twice you hear a very small guitar solo. It's really based around the D minor pentatonic, and we're really only using three notes. It starts with a bend on a G here on the second string, eighth fret. Go down to the F here with my first finger on the second string, sixth fret, and it ends on D, third string, fifth fret. These are just three notes from the D minor pentatonic scale that we use right here. But if I shift up so that my second finger is on this D, I can get all three notes without moving my hand. I'm just gonna play it like this. Using those chord voices, you should be able to put together the whole tune. The intro and verse are pretty much the same thing. With some type of digital delay pedal, that should get you the exact sound that you're going for in both the intro, the verse, and the pre-chorus of the tune. That's pretty much it for this tune. It's based really around those four chord voicings with a slight change once you get into the funky portion that makes up the chorus. Again, I encourage you to download the PDF so you can play along with the tune and really check out how this whole thing is put together. That's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thanks for checking it out.